And now it's my pleasure to introduce the president of Tulane University, Mike Fitz. Let, let me just say this is a beautiful site, which is filled stands at a basketball game. So um, this, this is a, a wonderful moment for Tulane University, Tulane Athletics, and Tulane Basketball. Um, as we know, we're in the middle of March Madness, so everybody all around the country is speculating who would make the Final Four, who will win the national championship. Well, here at Tulane, we've had our own March Madness, which is the speculation about who would be the next head coach at Tulane University. And let me say, we think we've won the national championship with this selection. So as you know, four months ago, uh, we named a new director of athletics. And Troy Dannon stood here and vowed that he would be focused like a laser beam on the performance on the field and on the court. And what we've seen since then is uh, the appointment of a new head coach in football, Willie Fritz. In volleyball, Jim Barnes. And now the trifecta, Mike Dunleavy Sr. Now, Troy is going to make the official introduction, but just let me say from the perspective of everybody, this is a master basketball coach. He's somebody who's performed at the highest levels. He's somebody who's a phenomenal teacher, and you can look at his track record, both on the court and who he's taught, who he's trained. Um, he is just an amazing individual for us to welcome into the Greenway family. Uh, and as I say, we're all proud, not only of, of what we see and what his accomplishments have been, but what we can foresee about Tulane athletics uh, going down the line. We can look forward, needless to say, to future March Madnesses when there's speculation at Tulane University about where we will land uh, within the, the national March Madness. So uh, with that, I want to turn it over to the impresario of this uh, entire process, the Director of Athletics, Troy Dannon. I think what President meant by all of that is we have to quit meeting like this. Uh, there have been a lot of press conferences and a lot of announcements, but the neat thing about uh, New Orleans and about Tulane, uh, press conferences are, are more pep rally than they are press conference. So uh, I, I never get tired of pep rallies, and pep rallies are there to celebrate something, and boy, I, I feel like we're celebrating the real deal today with, with Mike's introduction. Before I get started with a couple of things, uh, one, uh, I don't know that Daryl Berger was here this morning. Daryl hosted us for dinner last night, but I wanted to thank Daryl and the board for, for empowering this university and its athletics department to move forward and, and to, to, to raise our level to be a top 40 athletic program just as this inst institution is a top 40 institution in the country. I want to thank the president because he's empowered me to put together a staff that, that we feel in the department's capable of doing everything that we aspire to do to have every success that we all aspire for, for our university to have. And thank him for empowering us to get that done. And I also want to thank someone that never gets thanked, and that's the general counsel of the institution, Victoria Johnson, because she spent Easter, she spent Good Friday, she spent most of her vacation at her friend's house in California helping to get this contract done so we could have this introduction today. So that was kind of above and beyond from Tori, and I do want to thank her publicly for everything she did. Now. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago today, we started a search and there was one objective in the search. And that was to find somebody that had a, a defibrillator in their pocket. Basically, the guy that could come in and, and put that defibrillator down and shock what I think is a sleeping giant back into life. That's what we were looking for. I didn't know who. I knew characteristics. I, need, I needed somebody of high character. I needed somebody with charisma. I needed somebody that was a great evaluator of talent, somebody that, that, that was a great teacher a teacher of, of life and a teacher of the game. And I needed somebody, and I've said this a lot, a lot, I needed somebody who was a winner. So I started the search. Two days into the search, I got an email from a, a friend of mine down front that played football here, Miles Clements. And he said, hey, 
He said, Mike Dunleavy's interested in your job. And I said, I'm not interested. He's still playing for the Bulls. I don't want anything to do with him. <laughs> and he responded back, says, no, 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 the other Mike Dunleavy. And I said, you, you mean the guy that was an All-American at South Carolina as an athlete, the guy who, who played in the NBA, played with Dr. J, was NBA coach of the year, the guy that coached Magic, had Kareem, the guy that went to Wall Street and made a ton of money on Wall Street, the guy that was a general manager and kind of rebuilt an organization in the face of an of a owner who, man, I, I told him I won't be as hard to work with, but he rebuilt the Clippers organization as a general manager, a guy who is on air as a media personality, you mean that Mike Dunleavy, the guy who all of those things I was looking for, that he hit him to a T. He's really interested in this job. Yeah, he is. So two days later, uh, I had a phone call with Mike. And I was almost like a kid in the candy store because I watched him growing up. I watched him on the bench, I watched him on the floor. The guy didn't know how to lose. That's what I want. I was going to run through a wall to succeed. That's what I want. So I had this conversation with him. Man, he was all that and more. So last Wednesday, a week ago tomorrow, we had lunch at a place called Uncle Peter's by LaGuardia Airport in New York City. And I sat across from him, and the most important thing I was looking for was what I was told when I was looking at this job. You better want to be in New Orleans. You better love it. You better embrace it. And I, I knew his, his wife's sister lived here, and I knew he'd been here before, and I, I was convinced. But he told me three times he wanted the job. He told me three times he wanted to be a Tulane. He told me three times he wanted to be in New Orleans. He has a passion for us, and he has a passion for the city, and he has a passion to teach. And I don't care what level you're coaching at, professional, college, high school, and I don't care what kind of, of, of man that you're trying to deal with, whether it's a guy who makes 20 million or a guy who's never gonna catch the floor. The ability to teach and care about people is what defines you as a great coach. And I walked out of there and I looked at the guy that I had with me and I said, he's the one. That night I called him and offered him the job. He accepted it. Thankfully, it, we had two days to get some stuff done before it finally leaked out. But we got the guy we want, we got the guy we need. We got a guy with a resume that no one else in the country has. At the college level, Mike Dunleavy is unprecedented. And I will tell you the last two things about him. When I did my diligence, the greatest compliments that anyone else will ever give another coach is that when he walks into a gym, I don't care if it's in the American Conference, I don't care if it's in the ACC, I don't care if it's the national championship game, he will never be outcoached. That's a pretty strong compliment. And the second thing was that he cares about the guys and he teaches the game better than anyone else in the world. He knows the game, a lot of people know the game, but the ability to teach the game. So with all of that said, I'm very, very proud to be able to introduce one of the great teachers, one of the great basketball minds, and thankfully, the new head men's basketball coach of the Tulane Green Wave, Mike Dunleavy. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, Troy, thanks for that very nice introduction. Unfortunately for you, there's a couple of other Dunleavy's you might rather have. <laughs> One's the player, and there's another guy who's coaching in the Final Four for Villanova this weekend. So uh, uh, fortunately, they weren't available at the time. Um, President Fitz, thank you so much. Uh, again, enjoyed meeting you and for having me be a part of your family here at Tulane. Um, it's very exciting for me. Uh, I was looking to uh, get to the college level in order to put myself in a position to coach again and to really to be a, a teacher. Uh, I, I know growing, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, you know, I've played basketball my whole life. Uh, I've been influ influenced. Uh, I had a great high school coach in Brooklyn, a guy named Jim McMorrow, and then I went to uh, South Carolina and played for legendary Frank McGuire, 
we had some uh, great teams at, at, at South Carolina. And then, fortunately, I was, uh, I was drafted uh, by the Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, as uh, Troy alluded to, played with uh, so many great players, uh, Dr. J being one of them. But uh, gosh, I think I played with 10 to 15 Hall of Famers. You name them, Dr. J, George Gervin, the Iceman, Moses Malone, Artis Gilmore. World be free. Some a few few characters along the way as well. Uh, it's been a great life. It's been a great experience. Um, he played up my winning a little bit too much, but he was right about the fact that I don't take losing well. And uh, you know, I was very fortunate as a player to play on a playoff team every year of my career. Uh, I've been fortunate in the in the in the NBA. I've I've had some challenges. I've taken on. I've had good teams and I've had rebuilding you know situations. Uh, they've always turned out a lot better than from when I started. Uh, the one thing I can say uh, from a coaching standpoint that I would say, you, you, everybody Googles everything, you know, as far as, okay, records are concerned. Uh, if you look at my record, I'm not afraid to take on a challenge. So I've taken teams that had no chance of winning, but when I've left, they've moved on. The Clippers being a prime example of that. Before I got to the Clippers, they made the playoffs two times in 30 years. And then, you know, we built a great program there, and now they're a perennial playoff, you know, uh, team that's competing for a championship with guys that I drafted, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, et cetera. So um, that part of the, the basketball part, the I kind of look at it as the easy part. I've already been to the, you know, the Harvard, the Stanford's, and the Tulane of the uh, basketball world. And uh, now I'm looking to to be a, you know, a teacher of men. I look for the opportunity for, to, to bring young guys in and guide them uh, through their paths. You know, some are gonna be, uh, have aspirations to make it to the pros. Uh, some probably aren't gonna make it there, but you know, what I vow to every you know, home I walk in is that you're gonna, you're gonna come to this school, you're gonna get a great education, and, and then when you're finished, uh, being a good citizen here at Tulane, you're going to be welcomed into the uh, New Orleans community. There'll be there'll be jobs waiting and a and a place that that you're going to enjoy living for many years for the rest of your life. So, those are the, those are the goals uh, to get great guys with character. You know, I've coached all kinds of teams. Uh, one of them was called when I went there. They were called the Jail Blazers, uh, currently known as the Trail Blazers. And um, I went in there with the mindset that. Uh, Look, you can have great talent, you can have great athleticism, but ultimately, if you really want to win, you win with character. And so the guys that ultimately that we will look to bring in here and matriculate are going to be kids that, are go, you know, that have a lot of character, that who knows when you know, things get tough, you know, that's, when you, that, that's when you really get going, that you, know, that you, don't, you don't wilt in the face of adversity, that you learn. I mean, basketball is such a... Uh, a life's uh, tool, you know, teaches you to, prepares you to go into, you know, your, for all of us, right, college years have been the greatest. Uh, when you get out, there's lots that, you know, you don't know, you don't know what you're going to face, but uh, the time that you put in between your family and your school is what kind of gets you through it. So, again, that's my objective here is to, to build a program where our, our players will come back and they'll, uh, They'll feel great about the time they spent here, and they know they can rely on us and lean on us for you know, help going forward in the future. And, and, and they will be our biggest you know, supporters out there in the community. They will be our biggest marketers out there saying that you know, Tulane is a place that you want to come go to school and a place where you want to come play basketball. So uh, again, thank you so much for coming here today. And I'll open it up for any kind of questions that you, that you might have. Members of the media, if you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Who wants to go first? Coach Rod Walker with the New Orleans Advocate. Um, what do you think the biggest adjustment will be going from the NBA to the college game? Recruiting tests I have to take this afternoon in order to be able to go out on the road tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, on the floor, what type of adjustment is the most different between NBA and college? Is it just the number of plays that get called? Is it the 30-second shot clock? What is? Kind so of the, there are a few differences, obviously. There's some rule differences. The 30-second clock probably will be the biggest. Uh, the other one would be probably at the end of games, 
uh, NBA wise, uh, you can take a timeout and you can advance the ball to, you know, up the floor. So, you know, shorter seconds, uh, you have to, you know, as far as when uh, the game would still be on the line, for instance, you know, you score a bucket in an NBA game, you, 1.3 seconds timeout, you advance the ball and you got plenty of time to get the ball in, get a shot, maybe win a game. You know, NCAA, you take it out full court, so you've, you've got to have those kind of, um, you know, situation plays that, uh, you know, in order to, advance, you know, your different, different strategies, advance it, take another timeout, depending on how many timeouts you have in order to create basically the same situation. My name is Fletcher Mackle. I work at WDSU-TV. I have two questions, actually. You referenced taking on tough jobs. How soon can you turn this tough job into success? How quickly do you envision making this program relevant again? And second, can you talk about your ties to New Orleans? Because it seems like we've mentioned your name a lot in recent years. I know you were part of an ownership group that potentially tried to buy the, the Hornets and you have family ties here. Yeah, well. actually had actually had that deal for about 30 seconds. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, a couple of things as far as, um, you know, turning it around, I think, I think we'll get a turnaround as quickly as, as possible. The first thing, honestly, that, um, that, that I, have to, uh, I have to understand and, and learn, I have to study a little bit, is, uh, you know, is, is, is the team and understanding the, the, the players. I mean, I, I look at it as, uh, there's a certain way I would love to play. Uh, but my job as a coach basically is to come in and evaluate the talent and figure out, you know, what's the best way for them to win? You know, I mean, what skill sets do they have? And um, how can I take uh, best advantage of those skill sets in order to help them to win? I would tell you that from the very first start, it starts at the defensive end of the floor. Uh, we want to work, you know, really hard. First of all, get in great shape, be a great defensive team, because that mostly takes on effort. And if uh, you're given your great effort out there, uh, that's going to translate into close games. And then hopefully my job is if I can keep a game close, close enough that I can find a way, find the hot hand or find the matchup that, that gets you to take it home to the finish line. And as far as New Orleans, uh, yeah, I mean, when, when I decided to go the NCAA route, it was kind of because, uh, you know, we alluded to this situation with Donald Sterling, the owner of the Clippers, and how all that happened, and you know just who he is. I spent like close to two years, you know, in a, in a lawsuit with him, and got out of the way, and passed up some opportunities in the NBA with situations that weren't great teams. I was looking, you know, I, hey, I'm only interested in coaching somebody really good, and then it, you know, it basically comes. You, you go through a cycle of it, and then honestly, the chances of getting a really good team in the NBA is harder and harder and there's so few teams. So what I look for is, okay, uh, I think I know talent. I, I think I've picked the most NBA All-Stars in the last 20 years. I've picked five and DeAndre Jordan might make it six at some point. I think he's got that kind of talent. Uh, so I feel like I understand talent, I know talent. Uh, so that gives me an edge. I have a, I have a, a world-class uh, recruiting staff that is not even working at Tulane in the sense that uh, I have all these scouts that have worked for me for over the years that are in Europe, Australia, and Africa. So I think I have uh, a wide web of where I can go for talent. Uh, I think that uh, the next important thing for me was it has to be a city that I feel like that I would enjoy living in for the next 10 plus years. And uh, New Orleans, you know, I was checking off these boxes when Tulane, you know, name, you know, came up. And I'm saying, well, I already, I already know I like New Orleans. I already was willing to make a commitment here. I have family here. And I think it's, it, bottom line is, it, it's, it has a, it's a, a pro city, has all the pro everything as far as sports is concerned. It's got a great fan base. And uh, uh, between this Louisiana, Texas, Georgia, Florida, all this, you know, the surrounding states, there's a great talent base. So, I mean, I looked at it like there's, there's no reason why you can't win in a big way here. And the two programs that I've been most associated with have been Duke and Villanova small private schools, you know, with small on-campus gyms, but have, a, have an opportunity to go play in way bigger venues as you get better. So, uh, you know, I may be naive, but uh, that's my goal. Uh, I'm looking at, uh, like, you know, President Fitz and Troy said, you know, hey, we're looking at playing this kind of weekend some, somewhere along the line, and, and, that's, uh, and that's the goal. I can't tell you how long it's gonna take to get there. It depends on a few different factors, but uh, I'm, I'm totally a believer. 
I think I think it can I think it can get done here, and I think I'm going to do it. Hey, Coach. Is it on? Uh, obviously, you've seen how uh, you know certain successful college coaches don't find that their attributes translate well in the NBA, and vice versa. It's happened a lot of times. So I'm curious, at this point in your life, after so much time in the NBA, why do you think this is the the right move? Because I, I love to teach. Uh, I've seen it along the way. Yeah, well, fortunately, I, I have a little bit of a record, track record. I've uh, produced three Division I basketball players in my family. So I think that qualifies me a little bit of saying I can walk into somebody's house and say, you know, uh, I've seen your son play. And I think he's a good, uh, you know, Division I player that could play for me. And I think I can develop him. And here are my references. They're Dunleavy, Dunleavy, and Dunleavy. <laughs> So um, that's, that's one of the ways. And the other fact is that, I, again, I think from a standpoint of uh, talent level, that, um, well, first of all, and I, and I, and I talked to Troy, when, one of the first things we were talking about players, and I, and I told my play, the players yesterday in a meeting with them, the first thing you're going to find out, the, only, the first thing I want to find out about them is, what is it that they can do well? Because that's really what I care about. I said, I mean, from the first start, like, I'm going to try and make these guys the very best players they can be. I'm going, to, I'm going to show them things that as far as, hey, you've got four years, in some, you know, in some cases you've got three years left, you know, uh, two, one years, how many years you have left. I'm going to show you things that would help you get to whatever next level you're capable of playing at. Uh, so if you work hard, I'm going to lead you in the right direction. You're not going to work on a lot of stuff that's not going to help you, uh, you know, potentially get to that next level. So uh, those are the important things. If, if I have some over here who can, can make 12-foot jumpers, I'm going to find a way to get them 12-foot jumpers. Uh, the one thing I can, you, can, you can look up that, you know, from a factual standpoint of guys that I've had as free agents in the NBA, they all get paid. Now, they may not all get paid by me, but they're all getting paid because they do certain things. I try to bring out in them what they do well, and people look at them and, you know, and, and appreciate that fact. So. Um, I think that's a positive, and I'm hoping that helps. You know, when you when you do that, that the players enjoy playing because, you know, what their roles they feel. Look, everything everybody does. What we do is all about confidence. You know, I, I feel like I told these guys yesterday. Hey, I, I really don't know right now. I don't have my total confidence about saying that that I'm the best shooter in this gym right now. But when I left the last pro job I had, I was the best shooter in the gym. And so uh, I've had a little bit of time off. My wife has played a little defense on me. And so uh, I'm not sure if uh, it's exactly there yet. But, and, and they won't see it for a while. I'm going to get back in the gym and before we go out and play our horse game or I get challenged from one of these gentlemen over here. But that's the reality of it is that, um, you know, I'm going to do for them what they do best. And I think they're going to enjoy it. And we're going to play hard. And, and, and to me, that's the most important thing. Is, is the effort that you put out there. Uh, that, you know, playing together and playing hard, boy, that, that, that creates a lot, of, a lot of victories. Gary Smith with the New Orleans Advocate. Six, six years is a long time to be out of coaching. Was there a time, were you sure you were gonna get back in, into the business and how much, how eager are you to, to get back into it after that long? I effort? am, uh, you know, I mean, I, like, well, first of all, uh, I haven't, I mean, I haven't coached, you're right, in the sense of I haven't had a team to coach. But, you know, I, I spend time, uh, you know, working with guys individually, you know, just because I'm a gym rat. You know, when I live in L.A., I go, to, I go watch all the workouts of all the, I know, you know, all the agents, most of the agents are based in L.A. In the off seasons, they bring in all their players. So they'll call me up and say, hey, would you come down and, like, give our guys a clinic or work with our players or do this? And I, and I've, and I, and I enjoy it, and I always say yes. Somebody calls me up, hey, I've got, I've got a kid here. Will you come over and work with him? So uh, that part of it. And, un and unfortunately, I decided to get that I wanted to do you know, in college basketball about probably two years ago, maybe three years ago. And uh, unfortunately, one of the things that I didn't really understand was that uh, most of the colleges now use search committees. I mean, they go out and hire outside people to, to conduct searches. And, um, you know, and I didn't realize that. So I had all kinds of alums, you know, who gave a lot of money to school, probably put their names on buildings and said, look, you've got to come coach our team. And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to coach your team. This is a, it's a great area. It's a good city, great recruiting base. And then it, it kind of didn't happen. 
And then I realized, wow, I, I need to go meet these guys that, that are really kind of setting the athletic directors up and to do the hiring. So uh, I met, with, the, I met with, with guys in New York, I met with guys in Atlanta, I met with a guy in Dallas, you know I mean? And all of a sudden I got to meet these guys and they, knew, they now knew I was interested and they would tell me, okay, I'll put you on every, every list I have. I was, I won't say the name of the school, but I was offered a job last year from a school, but I, well, I, I shouldn't say that. Basically, the, the search guy said, look, this is a job that I would put you at the top of the list for and tell them, you know, this is the guy you should, you should hire. But it just wasn't in the place that, you know, that I could see living for the next 10 or 15 years. Nothing against where it, was, you know, where it is, but just, just didn't see it. Had, to me, that's one of the things. I had to be excited about coming someplace, you know, being in a community that I know I would enjoy living and, you know, being a part of it. So um, that's, that's the story. Three years has probably been the time frame that I've been literally kind of looking at it and, um, and looking for an opportunity. Andrew Lopez, Tom you. Do you have a timetable on your assistant coaches that you, you want to put together? Do you want to have it done relatively soon? And do you feel like there's going to be a guy on that staff that is well experienced in the college game, or is that something you're, you're not looking for? So the amazing thing about you know, all of this is that I know so many people you know, in this, uh, in, in, in basketball in, in general. Um, and I can't even believe since this has been announced, you know, the names and what has really come up as far as uh, people interested in the job. But, uh, you know, more than that, I mean, coaches around the country who have potential of future players saying, wow, you know, this is amazing. I would definitely, you know, send you guys in the future. You know, this, this takes it to another level. And, uh, you know, and so, coach, this is so-and-so from, hey, I, I used to be in New York. I'm now in Chicago. And where guys have, have moved between uh, high school and, athlete, you know, and AAU programs. So uh, the answer is I have real no timetable. Uh, I have a lot to get through. Uh, and I talked to, you know, some of the staff here today as well. And, Basically, I'm going to evaluate and hire the best guys I can hire. For the most part, I would say virtually everybody will have, you know, NCAA experience. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, there may be one or two guys that don't need it, you know, based on the, on the positions. Uh, obviously, your, your three assistant coaches, for me, will be guys who are, you know, uh, have worked in the NCAA, for sure. Um, and after that, it, you know, it kind of just depends. Leslie, Leslie Spin from WWL. Uh, um, two quick questions. First of all, we're all wondering if Baker will end up on your staff. Your staff, and then also. I think two that that's probably tampering. I'm not sure. In the NBA, it's tampering. Can't talk about somebody who has a job. Okay. So, so next, I don't want to get. I don't want to get you. I don't want to get you guys fined. I'm just worried about if, or, or I was wondering if you're worried about relating to some 19, 20 year old kids who are juggling class, not making millions of dollars, they still have to go to study hall and all that stuff. The, the only people I'm worried about relating to right now are names Lucy, who's five, Jack, who's four, Ben, who's getting ready to be one, and, and, and Rosie, who's at, at the final four, who's two. Everybody else I'm pretty good with. Them, them, them I'm not so sure about. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. You've been a great audience. Uh, please stick around for a little meet and greet with the coach uh, when we're done with the media interviews. As for the media, we're gonna do one-on-ones over here to your left, to the right of the stage. Thank you. Thank you.